Good morning guys and girls. Today we've got a species that I think even a lot of the fishermen probably, or non-fishermen at least, probably would have uh, come across. We had a little viral video that went around, just must be about a year ago, um, of this species fleeing away from a whole lot of dolphins, uh, dolphin fish and sailfish and things like that. Of course we're talking about the small head flying fish. Now, we're not talking about the uh, substitute beer, substitute beer. We're talking about a sardine-like fish, very, very large pick fins. They've got elongated other fins as well, but they actually use them to flee away. That's where they get their name from, flying fish. They can actually fly over the surface. Kilopogon, alti penis. It's not penis, it's penis. Um, it's a sardine-like fish, uh, very dark on the top, uh, silverish belly, quite a la large eye. Um, they're gill rakers, so if you ever opened or gutted a fish and gilded, you see that cob and things like that. Sometimes they've got these little spikes that sit on their, on their gill arches. So you've got gill arches, you've got gill plates or uh, gill filaments at least. And then the gill rakers sit in between, they're little spikes like that. That actually keeps the gills open when, they're not, uh, when there's not a lot of water around. So it allows them to get more surface area. Secondary to that, they can also form a little net. So a lot of your sardines, your clupioids, and things like that, use that for when they filter feeding. They can open their mouth and swim, and instead of all the food just shooting through out the gills, the gill rakers actually form almost a bit of a net type of system to slow everything down and capture it into the mouth. So that's how the flying fish feeds. It actually uses that to filter feed. They do also pick off smaller, smaller things in, under the floating debris and um, anything sort of floating around like that. Your, as we mentioned, the, where they get their name from, flying fish, they, what they do is they accelerate when they've either been disturbed by a boat or there's a predator chasing them, like you saw in the, the one with the Mahi Mahi. Um, what they do is they, they get up to speed, probably about 24 k's an hour thereabouts, is what it's reported. They breach the surface at a very, very low angle, so that's the sea surface, at a low angle, and then they open their peck fins like that. Now, because their fins are so large, so much surface area, it actually allows them to glide. So they're not flapping, they're not flying, flying. They're gliding, so falling with stars, Buzz Lightyear would say. They're now going to glide up to about, uh, it depends how, what speed they go, and obviously the sea conditions, but you're looking at anything from a few meters to, if they can almost hop, hop, they can get up to a few hundred meters. Now, they've got a very long um, fin just before the tail, lobe fin at the bottom there, that they can actually use to keel themselves, so that keeps them from, from flipping and things like that, like a tail, and they, if they slow down enough, their tail dips into the water and they can actually kick, uh, vibrate and kick going again and then that allows them to go even further. Now, the reason they've developed this is they're very, very important prey fish or uh, food fish, at least for a lot of predatory species. So, as in that video, the dolphin fish, Mahi Mahi, they love eating uh, flying fish. And with flying fish being a more surface orientated species, that's really where the Dorado are milling around. So they're very important for that. The sailfish, everything else does eat them. Sharks, everything like that. Um, in terms of distribution wise, they do find them all the way from Cape Town to Cozy, but they're really more, they're more common in your subtropical areas. So you're not gonna get them above Cozy and you're not gonna get them below Cape Town when it's too cold. They, they that, that sort of 15 to 20 degrees is sort of where they're happy, uh, water temperature wise. Your sizing, most of them are smaller, but they do reach upwards of 45, I think it was, 45 centimeters. Um, but most of your fish are gonna be under 30, and some of them all the way down to, you know, fingerling type size. So yeah, the flying fish, as we said, very important prey fish, amazing fish. I mean, the adaptions that they've got to, to flee predators, is just instead of just jumping out the water, this thing can now catapult itself, in essence, to a whole new location where the other fish can't get to it. Obviously, as you get out the water, now you've got predators from above that can get you. So it's a it's a win-win or maybe a lose-lose situation. Yeah, the flying fish. Cheers, guys.